Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Zyto Wellness webinar. My name is Jeff Crabb, and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Zyto, and we're excited to bring you uh, another uh, monthly well wellness webinar. And today we have an awesome presenter in Dr. David Lee, uh, and we are going to be talking about the GI tract and whole body health. And we have a lot of awesome uh, content prepared for you, and David spent a lot of time uh, prepping this and, and getting a lot of cool information uh, ready for you guys. We'd encourage you to be interactive with us all throughout today's webinar. And so one of the things, the cool features of these wellness webinars is that on the, on the panel that you'll see on your screen, you can actually go on, type in some questions, and we have moderators here in studio with us that will feed questions over to us and we can interact with David Lee that way uh, throughout the presentation. So we'd encourage you to take advantage of that today. Uh, we're super excited. Uh, I can't believe it's September. The summer is gone. And so um, we've had a lot of awesome experiences throughout the summer and throughout the year so far. We've had a great opportunity of getting out and meeting a lot of you guys all throughout the world. And uh, we've had these Zyto regional events um, and a lot of cool places. And these are full day events, training events that we put on. Uh, we have one more scheduled through the end of 2019. And that is scheduled, as you see on screen, in Las Vegas, Nevada on uh, Saturday, December 7th. And these are awesome chances to get together with us and interact with us, answer any questions that you'll have, um, and also learn about additional features that are in the software that you may not be utilizing. And we talk a little bit more about how to build your business around Zyto to be uh, you know, successful as practitioners. It's an awesome full day event, they're free to attend, and we would totally encourage you to join us and make sure that you're there with us. If you need a good vacation to go to a warm area, if you're in a cold area of the country that time of year, then be sure to join us in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, our 2019 Wellness Challenge has been super successful. We've had a lot of entries throughout the year, and if you haven't heard about it, we'd encourage you to visit us online at zyto.com and learn more about the Wellness Challenge. But uh, we have a winner that we have selected. Every month, essentially what happens is we encourage our customers to join us in a challenge and get outdoors and do a lot of cool hiking or biking, camping, whatever it is that you do, and join us. And uh, we do awesome monthly giveaways. This month, we actually have an Apple Watch that we'll be giving away. And that, that uh, winner will be announced at the end of today's uh, wellness webinar. So be sure to hang around with us. The instructions of how to enter are there on screen. And you can always uh, visit zyto.com forward slash wellness hyphen challenge. And that's a, a great way to join us in that. Uh, these wellness webinars are super important to us at Zyto. Uh, we feel it's a great opportunity to educate and increase understanding about Zyto, but also beyond just the technology itself, um, really some of the abilities that our bodies have in healing themselves. And so we have brought on a lot of really great presenters today. Like I've said, we have a great presenter in Dr. David Lee, but really it's to provide um, useful wellness information for health professionals and enthusiasts. We wanna share the unique perspectives from experts on a variety of wellness topics. And we've done a tremendous amount this year and we have a lot scheduled out through the remainder of this year and moving into 2020. Um, we wanna hear how experts utilize tools like Zyto technology in their practice or business. And we also wanna facilitate opportunities for the Zyto community to connect with other wellness professionals as well. And so this is a way to um, increase exposure about uh, you know different professionals that use Zyto technology, and it's an awesome platform. It's been wildly successful, and we're glad you're here with us today. Uh, let me, it's my privilege to share a little bit of information about uh, Dr. David Lee. He's been in practice for over 30 years. It sounds like 36, according to you, right? That's correct. 36 years. It's incredible. It's awesome. He is a doctor of chiropractic. He has a doctorate in public health. He's certified in functional medicine. He's a certified addictionologist and a neurofeedback practitioner. And so he has a lot of um, credentials that come along with the things that we're going to be talking about today. And one of the cool things that um, Dr. Lee will be talking about, and, I, and maybe this is how we want to start this a little bit, David, but um, can you share a little bit about where your passion for this industry of wellness comes from and how you initially got into contact with Zyto? Well, I started my practice in 1983 after being in the military for eight years and hurting my back and got, got excited about wellness because it was an alternative to what they were offering me with drugs and surgery. 
Mm-hmm. A friend of mine said, have you tried a chiropractor? And I had never heard the term chiropractor before. It began the journey of me to become one. And then when I became a chiropractor, I was always looking for better ways, quicker, faster, better ways to help people to hold their adjustments longer. And I got involved with NutriWest Nutrition. About 2004, my distributor told me about Zyto. And I went to a class and learned about Zyto and immediately became an early adapter. I was privileged to be part of some of the early biofeedback sessions that Zyto had back in the home office, for setting up biosurveys and things like that in the very beginning. And it's been hit the ground running ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, Zyto has been around for almost 15 years and I think uh, Dr. Lee's been around with us for about 15 years. So that's, it's awesome. And it's our privilege to have you here with us today. So we'd like to start off, I believe the, the presentation with the poll question to kind of get a feel of, of the, the viewers with us here today. And which body part has the most memory cells? So kidney, stomach, brain, or liver? So let's see, uh, the majority have said that stomach is the uh, body part with the most memory cells, brain, and then liver. How'd they do? They did well. <laughs> Scientific studies say that the stomach has more memory cells than the brain. The stomach is the winner. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, share that's a little bit more about by, that. You can drive by a restaurant and smell food that you like and immediately be hungry, even if you've just eaten just because of the memory cells in your stomach. It's so cool. Share, share a little bit more about, yeah, I, I'll turn the time over to you um, to take it from here and I'll just be interjecting questions that we get throughout the presentation as well. That's why the health begins in the gut. Well, the gut begins in, the memory cells in the stomach bring, bring, remind you of the food you wanna eat and everybody gets excited about food, of course. That's where we talk about how it begins. Five stars of health, starting with the gut. First, it's the water you drink, the food you eat, the emotions you control, the electricity, the cellular level, and your brain. This is a conversation I have with every new patient in my office. Water, because water is 72% of the body. 72% of the earth is water. Interesting how that works. God's math is perfect. You know that the moon controls the water on the planet, of course. The moon controls the tide and the gravity. That means if you take the moon and take the moon gently and place the moon on the Earth's equator, it would take 72 moons to make a circle around the Earth. 72. The inverse of 72, of course, in mathematics is 27. 27 is the temperature of your sun, or 2.7 degrees Kelvin. So 27 is the temperature of fire and 72 is the temperature of water. So water is there. 72% of what you put in your body should be water. Water matters. We talk about the water. Everybody sees well, I drink a lot of coffee. I drink a lot of tea. Does that count? No, it does not count. Coffee and tea are, are really diuretics. They actually decrease. So I tell my patients, for every cup of coffee they drink, it's like taking two cups of water and pouring it out of your body, dehydrating your body all day long. One of the first muscle tests I learned to do was the hydration test, which is in the crease of the chin right here. Therapy localized here for muscle testing for hydration. If it goes weak, they probably are about a quart low on water today. Food is the second source. Food. Everybody has a perfect diet. Everybody's all about keto diets and weight loss diets and this diet and that diet. But efficiency is a word that I use. We're worried about efficient food. What is efficient for your body is not necessarily good food, bad food, organic food, or inorganic food. We're talking about efficiency. One of the, one of the treats that I use is Diodamo's work where you eat right for your blood type is one of the ways we can get you more efficient. In other words, if you're a blood type O and you eat a lot of cheese, that's very inefficient food. It's not poison. It's not bad food. It's not, it's not nasty. It's not sinful. It's just inefficient. It means your body has an opportunity to either store it as fat, send it through undigested, or borrow from Peter to pay Paul to get it digested in the first place, which makes it very inefficient. So we spend a lot of time with our patients worrying about food and efficiency for the body, finding out what's efficient and what's not. That's not the same as a food allergy. It's food efficiency. Emotion. I studied a lot of Dr. Homer's work, Dr. Reich Homer on learninggnm.com. That's German New Medicine, learninggnm.com. Dr. Homer talks a lot about emotions in that. Talking about all disease starts with a shock, trauma, surprise. When your body goes into shock, trauma, surprise, it has a two-step protocol. The two steps are incubation and healing. So when you're incubating something, you don't have any symptoms, of course. 
that's where technology like Zyto comes into play. Most people go to the doctor when they have a symptom and they say, doctor, I've got a headache, I've got a backache, I've got a neck ache. Fix me, fix me, fix me. But those are symptoms, and symptoms don't appear until the second phase of disease. When the body's in the incubation phase, you have no signs or symptoms whatsoever. When you're in the healing phase, that's when the symptoms begin. So using technology like Zyto allows you to look at things way before the symptoms begin. Emotions. Electricity. The electricity of the body is at the cellular level. I use PMF for that, pulse electromagnetic frequency, to, to create electricity in the cellular level because every cell in your body is like a rechargeable battery. For example, if you don't recharge your cell phone, you're going to have a dead phone with by the end of the day. So tomorrow you'll be talking to no one. So you need to recharge your cellular batteries. One of the best ways to recharge the battery of the body is to walk barefoot on the earth, not on the carpet, not on the, not on the wood floor, barefoot on the earth, 30 seconds every day. Most of us have about 10 years of makeup time to do on that one. Brain. The brain is the most powerful substance on the planet because 90% of the nervous system of the human being is inside the brain. If 90% is inside the brain, even as chiropractors have to realize that 10% of what we affect is the atlas and below. 90% is in the brain. I use EEG mapping and things like that to complement my Zyto in order to figure out what part of the brain is working and what part is not because if your brain is functioning normal, your body will follow. If it's not, your body will not. Very important conception. There's three parts to the body we have. Endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. Endoderm, mesoderm, ectoderm. We learned that in eighth grade science class. And a loose translation might be endoderm might be emotional. Mesoderm might be structural. Ectoderm might be chemical. Or spirit, body, mind. Mind, body, spirit. That's how people describe it the way it works. In my theological world, I'm a Christian, so it says to me that it's eight times in my scripture that it says that it's impossible to separate the three parts of the body of Christ because it's a, it's a trinity. In the body, it's impossible to separate your emotion from your structure, from your chemistry. In other words, if you fell down playing volleyball and twisted your knee and your body says, oh my goodness, I've got a torn ligament, you get surgery, the surgeon fixes the structural problem. Most of the time, the surgeon ignores the chemistry and the emotional. What I've discovered after 36 years of practice is two things. Number one, I don't know enough yet. I get to say I don't know most of the time. The second thing I've discovered is that if you don't fix the structure and the chemistry and the emotion at the same time, you don't fix the person's body. And the problem usually returns. And when it returns, it returns over and over again. And it gets worse each time. That's why I love this technology because technology like Zyto, I'm able to look at the structure, the chemistry, and the emotion all at the same time. And we talked incubation and healing. Let's think about that. Chicken pox is a childhood disease most of the time. Incubation phase is 14 to 21 days. During the incubation phase, you have no signs or symptoms whatsoever. So what if you're four years old playing mud pies in the backyard on a summer day at your aunt's house? You're over there with your cousins. You've got mud on your hair, mud in your, your jeans. Your kids are having a great time. Your aunt comes out with a water hose, sprays everybody off. You get soaking wet. You have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and Kool-Aid, and everybody's happy. The next morning, you're back home with your mom, and your mom gets an early morning phone call from her sister, your aunt, in my made-up story. It says, you better check your child because mine has chicken pox. So your mother rushes in and rolls up your T-shirt and looks at your belly and your back looking for red blotches and a fever. She doesn't find anything. If you have the misfortune of being the first one, the next thing that happens is you get carted off to the pediatrician's office, and your mother's screaming, check my child. They might have chicken pox. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So at which point the head nurse spends the next 15 minutes very gingerly explaining to your mother that even though your child may have been exposed to chickenpox yesterday, there's an incubation period. The incubation period does not allow any signs or symptoms. So in other words, yes, Mrs. Jones, we would love to run an MRI on your child. We'd love to do blood tests on your child. We'd love to do all these tests. But it's 2019, and there's not a test known to man that would give us a hint of chickenpox during the incubation period. There's no signs or symptoms, so we cannot prove your child has chicken box. We'll have to just wait for 14 to 21 days to see what happens. Well, ironically, 14 to 21 days later, what happens? Yes, you wake up with chicken box. But during the incubation phase, you had no signs or symptoms whatsoever at all. When and if your body gets over the shock, the trauma, the surprise, the incubation is over. When the body says, I'm done incubating, I'm ready to push the bat out of my body, then your body begins the second phase of disease called the healing phase. The healing phase begins with symptoms. That's right. Your body's trying to push the bad out of the body. 
that's when you get diarrhea, you get a rash, you get pain, you grow a tumor, maybe even throw up. What's happening now is your body has all these healing phases. It's called the healing phase. You rush to the doctor and you say, stop my symptoms, stop my symptoms, stop my symptoms. And when that happens, your body, your allopathic physician may give you something, a procedure to stop the symptoms, which at which point, of course, stops the healing. That's what happens. We don't want that to happen. We want to, we want to, we want to heal the body from the inside out, of course. Examples of this might be your body, how your body works in connection with that. The diaphragm is like the equator of the body. As is below, it is above. So the diaphragm separates the body top to bottom, bottom to top. For example, you have four pressure valves in the GI tract that match the pressure valves in the heart. What are those valves? Those valves are more structural related. The valves are pyloric sphincter at the bottom of the stomach, which matches the tricuspid valve in the heart. The sphincter of odi, which matches the pulmonary valve. The other single valve is the mitral valve, and the valve we use is the aortic valve. Yet in today's modern medicine, Rarely, if ever, do you ever have a GI doctor call the cardiologist and say, hey, we've got a problem with the ileocecal valve. You might want to check this person's mitral valve. Or vice versa, when was the last time you went to the cardiologist and the cardiologist said you had a mitral valve problem and they told you you better check in with your GI guy because you might have an ileocecal valve problem also. Ironically, after 36 years of me keeping track and writing records down, this is usually the case. When one valve at the top of the body is in trouble, the one at the bottom of the valve is in trouble also. Although, if you don't have any signs or symptoms, if you're still in the incubation phase, nobody will pay attention to it in the allopathic world. You have the ability to do that. With your Zyto technology, you can do these things, and you can save your patients a lot of effort down the road, fixing problems long before they show up. Following the body down, for example, your right hip shares its nerve supply with the stomach, the right tensor fascia lata with the small intestines, the right knee with the ileocecal valve, so it's like somebody laid your stomach and your intestines down the right side of your leg, going around the corner of your ileocecal valve with the right knee. The right inner thigh coming back up is the ascending colon. The groin is the hepatic flexure of the colon. The left inner thigh is the transverse colon. The left knee is the splenic flexure. The left tensor fascia lata is the descending colon. And the left hip is the sigma colon of the colon rectum. You can predict where these things are at. You can also use lasers, percussion adjusting, and nutrition along with these things to change these parts of the body without going in with surgery. Chemistry. If you don't affect the chemistry of the body, you don't affect the whole body. Remember, it's structural, chemical, emotional. For those of you in the chiropractic world, you remember D.D. Palmer. He talked about structure, chemistry, auto-suggestion. The auto-suggestion he's talking about is a little bit about what? It's about what you think about while you're sleeping, your subconscious emotions. Should be time for another, another quiz. Yeah, let's get the next poll up here. It's uh, water absorption is most affected by either pH, temperature, ORP, mineral, or mineral content. When you when you work with people, just while this, this polls up here, David, um, what's kind of your common, like, average person that you see? Are they more in the symptom phase, or are they more in the proactive handling of their wellness? Most of the patients I see are already in the symptom phase. They're really in sick. I attract people from all over the country that are really sick. People get advanced diagnosis of rumors, tumors, and cancers. They've waited and they tried everything else first before they come to see us. Okay. Yeah, that's, I, I would imagine a lot of the practitioners that are on here with us today can relate to that. It's, it's funny. It's one of the messages I feel like that we struggle with a little bit of the more you can get in front of these things, like you're saying, uh, being proactive and monitoring monitoring these things, it's a long term benefit to you, you know. And so that's I I love how you're approaching a lot of these uh, ideas or concepts. Okay, so we got the um, results of that poll question up here. So it looks like the majority have said mineral content, uh, followed by pH, uh, oxidation reduction potential, and then temperature. Well, there's a lot of smart people out there, but my, my PhD is in water treatment plants and public health. And ORP is actually the correct answer. Oxidative okay. potential. Mineral content and pH is a real, real big plus. It affects the water really well. But the problem is the absorption level is based on the size of the water molecule. ORP, oxidative reduction potential, is, is in layman's terms means 
how many H2Os are stuck together? How big of a clump is it your body's trying to swallow? So what most people do, most people drink water, it's really clumped together in ORP, which means the body's got too many H2O molecules stuck together in a clump. You have to get five or less to go through the cell wall, the cell, the aquaporin in the cell of the, of the human being. So what happens is most of the water we drink is like washing grapes off in a colander in your kitchen sink. In other words, if you buy a handful of grapes at the grocery store, take them home and wash them off before you eat them, you spray them with water. What happens to the water you spray on the grapes? Of course, it bounces off. You wash the outside of the grape off, and the water bounces off and washes down the drain, of course. That's because the skin on the grape is too thick to let the water go through, correct? Uh-huh. So what happens to the water you drink? Most of the water we drink is filtered water, or at best, maybe pH altered water. But the water is stuck together with ORP. It's not correct. It doesn't allow the water to be small enough in particle size to actually go through the cell wall. So most of the water that the average American drinks is clean water, very clean water, not much bacteria, anything like that, but clumped together so much because it's been processed, we've been put into plastic bottles or things like that. That actually allows the water to bounce off your cells, washing the cells off on the outside, and you end up peeing the same water you drank 15 to 20 minutes later. Hmm. And the water that's inside your body cells, which is old, stays inside. The old water in the cells and the new water on the outside of the cells, it doesn't exchange. When it doesn't exchange, the water inside your cells eventually becomes mold, mildew, stale, stagnant, aged, rusting, rotting, maybe even tadpoles, right? So that's why people start to rot and rust from the inside out because they may be drinking. You could drink three gallons of water a day and still be dehydrated if the water you're drinking is not small enough in particle size to actually go through the cell. The most effective way to get the water into the cell is to run it through the earth, which is well water. Clean well water is the best water we can drink by far. Water that's struck by lightning also emulates that same same process, which is why some of the machines, like the Kangen machine, works really well as well. Reverse osmosis, for example, cleans the water very, very, very effectively, but it does not change the ORP. Same thing with distillation. Distilled water cleans the water really well and gets everything out except the water, but it doesn't change the ORP. So the most effective way to do it is to change the ORP, which is by striking with lightning and running it through the, the earth. And that, the nasty thought about that might be this. Most people in America drink clean water out of their water treatment plants, run through their faucet, and they're thinking they're getting really clean water, and they are. The water is full of chlorine and other, other antibacterials. And it's also very thick, very hard to absorb the water. So this water is carrying them. Water has memory. Water is a living being thing. So water has memory. So if you flush down a bunch of stuff down your toilet that you don't want anymore, like leftover prescription medicine, things like that, it's like creating a homeopathic blend in your water treatment plant. A homeopathic blend carries the memory on the water. The water goes into the water treatment plant and it cleans up all the chemicals but doesn't take the homeopathic blend out of the water. So over and over and over again, the water gets reused, reused, reused. And if that water is never released back into the earth, which in most places it is not, most water treatment plants clean their water and take the clean water and put it right back into the system. They don't put it back into the river. They don't put the junk in the river and they put the clean water back into the system. <clears throat> this is unfortunate because you're creating a homeopathic blend in the water. So all that leftover Prozac and other things like that that came in your neighbor's water is now being affected by the rest of the population day in and day out. Food for thought and nasty, nasty thought too, isn't it? I know. Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't want to know what my neighbors are putting down the drain. <laughs> there may have been more information than you wanted on the poll. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that's that's. I love that. And in fact, that was one of the questions I was going to ask is specifically about the separation of those water molecules. It's fascinating. So the chemistry works really well. The best way that I can do is my nutrient scans by Zydo. I use the basic 5.0 for a lot of things in the office because people come in every month. Once a month, we call it their nutrition checkup, but basically we're doing a lot more than a nutrition checkup. The checkup, we're looking at the, the basic nutrients that might fill the holes or fill the gaps. It's become like a competition in my patients. They want to know how many biomarkers you've got out of place and they want to know how they're doing this month compared to last month and things like that. It gets kind of exciting around the front desk when they come in. They go, oh, I'm doing better than I was last month, you know, those type of things gives us an opportunity to fill it up. But I also use the, the uh, what I call the emotional page, which is a slide map page on the, on the Zyto, with the organ chart. The organ chart gives me their emotions of the day. The top three and the bottom one always gives you a hint 
I don't have a slide on that one, so I apologize for that. But I think everybody who's uh, using the title already understands that. And the people who are not using that need a demo. When they, when they go to see their demo for the title, they need to see the emotional chart. Really helps you to get to know your patients really well. Methylation is a big product right now also when we talk about that. The methylation products, I'm working on a biosurvey right now for methylation, which for, especially for the emotions, it should help everybody in the, in the whole Zyder community. Patient-specific food lists, I tell you to start with that with the one that I use is Eat Right for Your Blood Type. It's not the best food list on the planet. It's not fall. It's not perfect. It's not a Bible of food. It's just a great place to start. And then, of course, we talk about water absorption. If I could just get my patients to drink good water, water that will actually absorb in their body, get away from all this crazy bad waters and things like that, well water would be the best thing, best thing out there to get. Spring water is a good alternative if you can get it in glass jugs. If you can't get spring water or well water, then you might want to succumb to a machine that creates ORP water. It's a great way to look at it. But let's go back to the Zyto scan again. On the emotional scan, that gives us where it's at. That's why we, we like this book, Feeling Fair Alive Never Die by Carol Truman. Gives you a hint about how well your emotions can affect your body all the way through. For example, each part of the body has a, has a symbol. It's kind of fun how that works. If the colon shows up, the person might be dealing with an issue of deceit, betrayal, and nasty inheritance issues. That means that if your body has a colon problem, there's a structural problem with the colon, there's a chemical problem with the colon, and there's an emotional problem with the colon. All three of those are equal partners. It's impossible to separate the three because it's a trinity. That's how the body works. Deceit and betrayal does not necessarily have to be their own. It could be somebody in their life. So in other words, it could be their spouse, it could be their co-worker, it could be their neighbor, it could be their friend, it could be their child, it could be a person down the street. Somebody that's affecting your life is dealing with the scene betrayal. It can be affecting your colon. Small intestines is chronic swallowed anger, something the indigestible anger or hard to accept. Stomach is more on the acute level, acute swallowed anger, indigestible anger, hard to accept. The throat. Uh, grief, rage, gagging, you know, life experiences. Mouth as low as the poison apple, wanting to get rid of something in the, not on my comfort zone. Each part of the body is like that. On the Zyto scan, when it gives you the organ thing, it goes it runs down the list of like adrenal glands. Before we get to that, when you get to the adrenal glands, it tells you you've been thrown off course or made a bad decision. The gallbladder is, is all about bitterness and resentment. The spleen is self-esteem. The hypothalamus gland is how you feel about yourself. The liver is starvation of love or validation. The lungs are grief, sorrow, or scared to death, or death fright. Thyroid is powerless. I can't catch something I want to catch. I can't get rid of something I want to get rid of. The bladder is my role in life or the hats that I wear. Pancreas is unresolved family issues. All these body parts tell a story along the way. It's amazing how the body will tell you what's going on just by, just by scanning it with your zyto. Even the dental chart in the Zyto scan gives you a hint. Each part of the body has what? A tooth, and each tooth has a nerve supply shared with the body part. Your front two teeth, for example, give you a hint about kidney and bladder. They might indicate, doesn't mean you have a bad tooth, doesn't mean you have a bad cavity or anything like that. It just might mean the nerve supply to the tooth is shared with your knee, your ankle, your back, your backache, sciatica, fear, osteoporosis, edema, frequent urination, arthritis, wishy-washy thoughts, those type of things. Some people actually adjust teeth. Most people would be better off just to just to brush them and, and uh, floss them more often, to say the least. This chart really helps a lot. Parathyroid gland to go through is chemical toxicity. Parathyroid gland actually helps your body to get rid of chemical toxicity. So if you have heavy metal toxicity, parathyroid gland is going to be overactive. We already mentioned gallbladder for bitterness and resentful. Pancreas unresolved family issues, liver starvation and love, validation. The example of liver might be somebody at work, you work in a corporate America, and you come up with a great idea to save your company a lot of money, and you take your idea to your, your supervisor, or your immediate boss, and then six months later you find out that they took credit for it, and they got the raise, and they got the promotion, and you didn't get anything about it. That's starvation and validation. I covered that pretty quick. I've got questions coming up now. We do have some questions coming in. Let me throw a few at you. Um... 
So going back to that incubation phase that you were talking about, is there a way that you've found successful to find and treat problems during that incubation phase? Absolutely. It's much better to treat during incubation than it is to wait till the symptoms come out. And what are some of the ways that you identify those, those issues? Well, usually we, we work with that with, with the Zyto scan. When the Zyto scan comes up and we start looking, we correlate between the acupuncture points, the teeth chart, the emotional chart, and the organ chart. And we, we fill the holes with their nutrition and their biomarkers. We begin to change the incubation phase really quickly. Combining that with the Evox, which is one of the best tools that we ever came out with, the Evox really opens up the emotional channels really fast. I can't imagine not having that tool in my office nowadays. Yeah, Evox is pretty amazing. And it's cool. I, I, one of the things I love about what Dr. Lee's talking about is when, we're, when all the features that we're mentioning here start in the Zyto balance system, um, obviously in the select of the, the elite Evox, they allow you to handle different um, modalities or uh, incorporate different ideas. Um, but one of the cool things is when you're looking at a Zyto report, and Dr. Lee, maybe talk about this, when you're looking through, because I love how you look at a, a Zyto report, the wellness report that we released a year or two ago. Talk uh, and, and these are several of the questions we've received is how you identify or how you work with people through the emotion chart of the wellness report. Um, what are some ways that you start to identify where some of the needs uh, that, the body, that the body's uh, responses are looking at? So, for example, on the, on the uh, organ chart, if kidney is the one with the weakest energy, uh, that means the body's suffering with some kind of abandonment. The kidney is all about safe, secure, and belong. The basic three needs of all children and all human beings are I want to feel safe, I want to feel secure, I want to feel like I belong. And the kidney falls apart when you don't feel safe, secure, or belong. So that shows up on the Zyto report. Then I'm going to go after it with the emotional work. We're going to do a little e-box, and I can add a little narrative in there and just say, how do I make this person feel safe, secure, and belong? If their belief is like mine, if they have a Christian belief, I can make them feel safe, secure, and belong by being in Jesus' arms. If they've got a different belief system, I need to find out what that is and help them with that. And that works pretty good. How so in do other words, you, oh, yeah, so we sorry, it, go ahead. So we word it based on what their what their condition is. If they don't feel safe, secure, and belong, then we give them the opposite thing. What is it that makes them feel safe, secure, and belong? What what conditions can we get to make them feel feel better about themselves? For example, a child that grows up in a divorced family, they have a subconscious mind in their brain that says what? People that love me are going to leave me. So how would you like to date that person when you're in your 20s? They grew up in a household where mom and dad split up and left, and the, the kid thinks what? A four-year-old child thinks that parent left because it's their fault. It doesn't make sense to an adult, but it made perfect sense to a four-year-old that it's their fault they left, right? Mm -hmm. So what they're thinking is we have to convince this person emotionally that they feel safe, they feel secure, and they belong. They have to have an anchor to hold on to. And even if mom and dad are not that anchor, they have to go higher to a higher power or become stronger within themselves in order to do that. So we can do that through the nutritional support. We can do it through the emotional support with the EVOX and the, the structural, which is what I do with the chiropractic as well. But you have to put all three pieces together in order to do that. If it's thyroid, it's about power. Powerless to catch something, powerless to get rid of something. If it's pancreas, it's about their family issues. They have to feel good about how their family is falling apart or coming back together again, whatever the case may be. Sometimes you just have to give people courage to cut some of their family members off. Say, well, maybe I'll just send them a Christmas card every year and that's all we'll deal with them. It's a hard line to draw, but it really comes out in the, in the scan. So when you, when you bring someone in for the first time, what does that initial consultation look like for you? Are you running them through, I mean, you said that you're continually running through their basic balance scan. Um, do you encourage people to immediately go into an EVOC session um, or do you incorporate that later on after you've kind of had this initial consultation with them? How does that work? The initial consultation runs and I do a, I do a Zyto basic scan and walk through it page by page with them in the consultation. And I actually do that before I read their history form because it gives me an opportunity to see how accurate I am with the, with the Zyto. And 99% of the time I've already read their mail before I even read their history form just by the Zyto scan, by the 5.0 scan. And then I'll suggest to them treatment plans based on what I found. The treatment plans might be nutritional support, chiropractic adjustments, modalities, evox, emotional work, those type of things. Depending upon how 
the person responds to my comments about their emotions will depend on whether or not we start the evil try to wear or not. Okay. Some people are ready, ready and willing right at the very beginning and some people are not. Yeah, I think that that's I, one of the cool things that Evox uh, has incorporated into it is the ability to do transgenerational perception reframing. So, I mean, you mentioned a lot about, you know, we absorb a lot from the environment in which we were born into. So it could be a divorced parent, but it also is even things that maybe weren't so environmental. It's just things that we were absorbed from our, our previous generations. And uh, I, I love that you know, you're identifying those things and helping people fill that secure, you know, that security and helping them deal with those emotions. Well, it helps them a lot because I deal primarily with a Christian clientele. But the point about that is that the sins of the father can be manifested for up to four generations later is what it says in our Bible. So that helps a lot of people when they come in with a child with, with childhood cancer and those type of things looking for answers, mm -hmm. trying to figure out if Dr. Lee, if, if the incubation period is 10 years for cancer, how does my four-year-old have cancer? Yep. That gives them a little peace of mind there to understand that it could be something that came from one, two, three generations ago. And that's perfect to be able to run the, the Evox for the yeah. transgeneration things first. Yep. So awesome. I love I, the incorporating, you know, we often teach at, at these um, regional events. We talk about looking at results through the Zyto technology through essentially three lenses of perception. And one is emotions, one is energetic, and, one, and the other being functional. And so when you're looking at, and, and that's what you, Dr. Lee, do so well is identifying where there's energetic imbalances and seeing, you know, how to help that body get into a healing position to help heal itself, you know. Uh, I, I think it's awesome. That's where the five stars of health come in so well. You have yes. to get people thinking about not just taking a supplement or getting adjusted or getting a procedure done. They have to take control of their own life. We have to give them back control of their life where they have to be willing to drink water, eat good food exercise, those type of things. Get their electricity, get yourself grounded again and get their brain working right. Absolutely, absolutely, I love that. Um, one other question that we had come in is, um, well, let me, I have a couple more and, and I'll throw these at you. How do you talk, or excuse me, well water that has been uh, run through reverse osmosis, what's your opinion on that? I love it because the well water is, is already ORP'd and the, the reverse osmosis makes sure it's perfectly clean. There's nothing been leaching into the ground. And, the, and the, once again, the uh, reverse osmosis doesn't change the ORP, so the ORP is perfect when it comes out of the ground. So I think that's the best of both worlds. Awesome. Okay, great. Um, the last question I think I'll throw at you here is, can you talk more about the role that the gallbladder has more in the overall um, digestion uh, process of the body? Well, I'll give you a hint about that. I had somebody come in with a Zyto scan with abdominal pain, who's a registered nurse that worked for a local doctor's office here in town, a local medical doctor's office. She came in and she was complaining of gallbladder symptoms, and I suggested some nutrition. I suggested a gallbladder flush and a couple other things. And we did a scan on the Zyto, and we printed it out for her and gave it to her, and she took it back to her doctor's office. And her doctor ran a gallbladder scan, an ultrasound on her, and said, there's nothing wrong with your gallbladder. The chiropractor's a quack. Right? Of course, that's what they always say. <laughs> well, we found out later on, we found out, well, this is how we found out. Six weeks later, we hadn't heard from the patient, so we did a recall and say, hey, how's it going? Last time we saw you, we thought we were about ready to have a gallbladder attack, and then you told us we were a bunch of quacks because there's nothing wrong with your gallbladder. How's it going? She said, well, I've been meaning to call you because I just recovered from gallbladder surgery. Unbelievable. <laughs> she Unbelievable. said, my gallbladder exploded on me about three weeks after, you, after I came to your office. She goes, you were absolutely right. I should have done what you told me to do. She says, but, but even more importantly, she goes, it didn't make any sense until I realized that I was so bitter and resentful against my sister-in-law who had gotten a job promotion and gotten a new job, and I was all bitter about that and couldn't get over it. I had to scratch myself and get over it. Now I've gotten forgiveness, and her and I have a good relationship again. Unfortunately, I have these little scars with the gallbladder, but that's it. So the gallbladder could be bitterness and resentment coming from you or someone else. It doesn't have to be yourself. Yeah. The gallbladder itself is not a wasted organ. You really need it. Yeah, it, that's, it helps you to emulsify your fats and digest fats are alive and fats are so important in the body. Without the gallbladder, you can't really digest fats at all. So, and so what do you, how do you help people that have had like their gallbladders removed? Like what type well, of impact? Well, the deal is that your brain thinks the gallbladder is still there. So when you eat something and say you have a, 
red meat steak or something like that with a lot of fat content and a hamburger or something like that, if that's, if that's your type of diet. And your body goes, well, how do we deal with this? The brain sends a message down to the gallbladder and says, hey, you know what to do. You've been doing this show a lot. The brain doesn't realize that the gallbladder is not there. Correct. They were best friends. They grew up together, right? <laughs> yeah. They keep saying the message. The message keeps going down there, but the message doesn't go anywhere. It just it's on deaf ears. So those people are going to have to change their, their diet or they're going to have to, to live on supplements, digestive enzymes and things like that to help to digest it. Otherwise, their body's going to store it as fat or create new problems. Sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, uh, I, we were continually getting a, f a couple more questions, but we, I would just point people to, we have um, Dr. Lee's super uh, generous and has provided us uh, his contact information for additional questions. So if we didn't have a chance to get to your questions during today's wellness webinar, uh, you see his email address on there, docleewellness at gmail.com, as well as the website wellnessrevolution.club. Um, and we just encourage you and, and thank you to Dr. Lee for today's presentation. It's been awesome. Uh, a lot of information. And, and if you want to reach out to him, he's phenomenal at what he does. We've had, how many times have you spoken at Zyto events for us? More than I can count. I've been blessed I, to be a part of it all along since the beginning. It's very, it's always a great crowd and always great questions. I learn a lot. I get to, I get to, whenever I speak, I get excited because I know I'm going to learn something that I didn't know before. Because inevitably somebody raised their hand and asked a question about something I have no clue. So I have to go home and study. Yeah. We're all in this learning together, aren't we? Amen. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Well, and, and, and that's how this, that, you know, that's the purpose of these wellness webinars. It's just idea sharing. And so let's advance to the next slide right here. And this is some of the features that we have within um, our basic balance scan. So like I said, introductory, very much uh, an affordable option. You don't have to get our elite system in order to get access to some of the features that uh, David Lee has talked about today. So here you'll see some of the uh, gastrointestinal stressors that are available in the balance to scan for, as well as the four core systems that we scan for within the wellness report. So you have gastrointestinal being one of them, immune system, endocrine, and detox system. And these are uh, probably our most wildly popular uh, reports that are available in our Zyto system, um, and they're awesome. In the select and the elite system, we do offer um, the Foods for Wellness scan. They ha this is a super popular um, uh, report as well that you can actually scan for. We used to have at Zyto just a general uh, food scan, but we decided to change our perception of food and look at them as balancers instead of stressors. And that's really the fundamental basis of this report. And so in the select and the elite, those are features that you have available to you. So uh, you'll, you'll see the preferred um, foods that your body energetically responded to. And um, this is a great uh, report to base some dietary decisions on. Um, I have, we have a coworker here at uh, Zyto whose dad went through a, uh, a scan every month. And that's how he based a lot of his uh, food decisions. And it was wildly successful of getting him back into a healthy lifestyle. And so this is a, a great opportunity to reach out to additional patients and incorporate food as balancers in this whole process of, uh, of wellness, of coming back to wellness. So um, our August wellness webinar giveaway, or excuse me, our, our, our wellness challenge giveaway winner was for an Apple Watch, which I have here in studio with us today. Um, recent gen, so it's super awesome. Um, the winner for that is Audra Crosley. Uh, so we'd like to congratulate her. There's the uh, picture of her wellness challenge for the month that she submitted. And these are, we just encourage you as you're out and about doing a lot of fun and different activities, uh, reach out to us, let us know. So there's a website online of how you can learn more to how to participate. It's super easy. Take a picture like you see Audra did there and submit that to marketing at zyto.com. And that's how you get your entry in. Super free to participate with us. And you get awesome prizes like the uh, Apple Watch you have here today. So uh, we look forward to seeing a lot of fun pictures coming in over the next uh, few weeks for next month's giveaway. A reminder that we have one more Zyto Regional event for the year 2019 um, in Las Vegas, Nevada. Reach out to us on zyto.com forward slash events. They're free to attend. They're all day. Uh, we, lunch is provided. They're super awesome. Uh, and it's a training event, so it's, it's something that we answer a lot of questions. It's very interactive, networking opportunities in the area. So we look forward to seeing a bunch of you guys down there with us uh, in December. Our next 
wellness webinar will be on October 2nd at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time as always. Uh, it's going to be Margaret Norman who will be talking about breathing for better health. And so we'd hope that uh, you join us next month. They're, these are awesome. We're super appreciative to everyone that's here with us live today. If you're watching this after, please be sure to join us next time at the live uh, presentation. Uh, they're always fun to have everyone here with us. So until next time, we appreciate it. Dr. Lee, thanks for being here with us today and spending time with us and sharing some of your insights. Welcome so much. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. Happy to everybody out there. Yeah, every, anytime. We appreciate you. So until next time, everyone, we'll chat with you. We'll chat with you later.